As we meditate, we try to bring the mind to a state of calm and serenity. But you notice if you look at the Buddhist explanations for the factors for awakening, there are times when serenity is appropriate and times when it's not. The times when it's not doesn't mean that you're not going to try to aim there eventually. But if the mind is sluggish, if your body lacks energy, you first have to energize it. Then you calm it down. Otherwise, if you simply try to calm it down, you fall asleep. This may be one of the reasons why John Lee, when he begins his breath meditation instructions, tells you to breathe in and out deep and long, three times, seven times, just to air out the body, air out the mind. Make sure you have enough energy before you start calming things down. This is also one of the reasons why rapture in the factors for awakening comes before serenity. Greatest sense of energy in the body, energy in the mind. So that when you calm things down, you can still be bright and alert. Because we're looking for a state of concentration that is very alert. So notice if you need some energizing, do that first. Think in ways that are energizing, breathe in ways that are energizing. Think of the Buddhist analysis of how we fabricate the present moment by the way we talk to ourselves, by the way we breathe, and by our feelings and perceptions. Or to put them in another order, bodily fabrication, the breath, verbal fabrication, how you talk to yourself, mental fabrication, perceptions and feelings. So if you're feeling sluggish, breathe in a way that's energizing. Talk to yourself in a way that gives you some energy. This may be one of the reasons why the Forest of Johns like to use images of going out into battle or working on a skill, to remind yourself you're not here just trying to have a moment of calm and relaxation. There's work to be done here. Then hold in mind perceptions. What kind of perception of the breath gives you energy? Hold that perception in mind. And do you get a sense of fullness? Or rapture. The word rapture here, could also, or the Pali word is bitti, can also be translated as refreshment. Simply feeling refreshed by the way you breathe, by the way you're sitting here, by the way you're relating to your body. And then you can allow things to grow calm. Now, the process of calming. Otherwise, if you already have too much energy. You don't have to worry about adding more energy. That's when you have to simply calm things down. And you usually find that there are two things that are bothering the mind. And then, of course, there's the issue of the body being agitated as you come in from work. So breathe in a way that's calming. And again, hold the different types of fabrication in mind. Talk to yourself in a way that's calming. If you have distracting thoughts, talk to yourself in a way that reminds you you don't have to pay attention to them. You're not responsible for the thoughts. And for the time being, they have no meaning. Think of them that way. They're just the mind's empty chatter or the play of images on a movie screen, red, yellow, green, have meaning only if you give meaning to them. If particular thoughts are really insistent, try to think in a way that counteracts them. If the thoughts of lust, you can think about the unattractiveness of the body. Thoughts of anger, you can think about your own well-being and your need for goodwill to maintain your well-being. In other words, find an antidote. 
And after things have calmed down a little bit, remind yourself that even though there may still be a little bit of chatter and thoughts may be appearing here and there, you don't have to pay them any attention. You can breathe right through them. If you can locate the part of the body that's tensed up around a particular thought, try to breathe through that little pattern of tension. You can think of yourself as being a spider on a web. A thought appears in the left-hand corner. You can go over to the left-hand corner, breathe through it, and then go back to your center. A thought appears, and it's related to some tension in the knee. Move your attention down to the knee. Breathe through that, and return to your center. And the effect of all this is to Gain a sense of detachment from your thoughts. You're not so interested in what you're thinking. We spend so much of our time listening to our thoughts, trying to straighten them out if we don't like them, feeling that they're really important. The thought comes up and you ask yourself, what does this mean in terms of the world? What does this mean in terms of me? What does this show me about my psyche? All kinds of different ways you get, get interested in your thinking, and you have to learn how to unthink those ways, hold a new perception in mind. But the skill of getting the mind quiet is much more valuable than your ability to, to think right now. If you are going to be thinking, thinking, think about how to still the mind, bring the mind to calm, to serenity. As for pains in the body, again, think about how you breathe around the pain. Find a spot in the body where you can create a sense of well-being by the way you breathe. And that gives you a foundation to stand on. You don't have to go jumping into the pain. Stay in your spot. And as the breath energy there gets good, let think of it spreading through the pain so that the pain doesn't form a wall. And then you can look at the perceptions you have around the pain. Ask yourself, is it one big, solid pain? Or is it made up of little moments of pain? You're trying to find a perception that's more calming, so the perception of little moments is more calming to the mind. And then if you think of the pain moments going away from you instead of coming at you, that is also more calming. You can also hold in mind the perception that the pain is one thing, the body is something else, your awareness is something else. After all, the body is composed of the four elements, earth, water, wind, fire, or solidity, coolness, warmth, energy. The pain is something else entirely from those four things. It may seem to be in the same space, but it's on a different level, different frequency. Hold that perception in mind, and then your awareness is something else. And you find that the pain has much less of an effect on the mind, and that the problem really wasn't with the pain, it was the perceptions you had about the pain, saying the pain is invading my space, the pain is invading my knee, my back. I am being pained by it. It has a bad intention toward me. It's coming at me. Those perceptions stir up the mind. So we replace them with perceptions that are more common. These are some of the ways you use those different kinds of fabrication to get past the barriers to getting the mind into concentration. You begin to settle down, have a sense of stillness. The problem is once the mind gets into concentration, it can still stir itself up. That issue of rapture that comes. Sometimes it really is rapturous. Sometimes it is very strong. People get a strong sense of pressure, say, in the chest, in the head. The more they concentrate, the stronger the pressure grows, and the harder it is to deal with. Here again, though, you. Think about how you're breathing, what perception you're holding in mind. 
So sometimes as you breathe in, the breath energy pulls up into the head, concentrates in the chest. So you want to think of the breath going down, out the legs, out the arms, out the soles of the feet, out the palms of the hands. Hold that perception in mind. And remind yourself there are many levels of breath energy in the body. If you're focusing on one that is energizing and becomes unpleasant, after you've opened up all the escape channels, and try to tune into a calmer energy in the same spot where there's the excited energy. It's like digging a well. When I was living in Marasokaram, they had a constant problem because the monastery was right at the edge of the sea. And they needed to dig wells there. There was no public water coming in from outside. And they discovered that if you dug down to one level, you'd get salt water, and another level, you'd get fresh water, and then another level, more salt water. There are layers and layers. So the problem always was that sometimes the layers would shift. A well that had been bringing in fresh water suddenly would bring in salt water, so they had to dig a new well, get the right depth. You can hold that image in mind. Your body has many layers of breath energy. And so focus in on the layer that's appropriate right now. If you need a sense of refreshment and energizing, focus in on one that's energizing. If you need one that's more calming, try a level that's more calming. You can also ask yourself your perception about the body. If there's a feeling that the energy is bottled up in the body, that means you're perceiving a membrane that can hold it in. Try to hold a perception in mind that there is nothing that holds the energy in. It's more of an energy field that can go out in and out of the body. It doesn't have to be contained here. And there's nothing pushing it against anything else. It can flow freely in, freely out, through all the pores of the skin. And the sense of oppression can go away. There are some people who have trouble with feelings of rapture because they've had near-drowning experiences. They say that when you, when you almost drown, there comes a point where there's a strong sense of fullness in the body. And the feelings of rapture can seem very much like that. That's what you hold in mind, the perception. You're not surrounded by water, you're surrounded by air, you're surrounded by space. You're not going to suffocate, you're not going to drown. I had one student who'd almost drowned twice. After a couple of years of meditation, she came to me and said, I've got to stop doing breath meditation. Every time I focus on the breath, I get this strong sense of fullness. And I said to her, a lot of people want that. She said, well, she didn't like it. And I asked her, have you had any near-drowning experiences? And she said, yes, twice. So we'll work out a perception that allows you to, to remind yourself you're not surrounded by water. So she had an image of herself as being a peninsula surrounded by air. That helped her get over her fear of that sensation, calmed her down. Because it may be part of the mind that really likes the sense of fullness and doesn't want to let it go, but then it starts getting excessive. So you have to remind yourself, deeper concentration lets the sense of fullness go. That too is a helpful perception, and a helpful thing to say to yourself. Focus on in on a more subtle level, and for a while that sense of fullness will be there together with the more subtle level, but if you're not focusing so much on the sense of fullness, eventually it dissipates. And the mind gets into a state of concentration that's deeper, with a sense of well-being. We think of the breath energy connecting everywhere throughout the body. There's just no need to pull the breath in or push the breath out. 
there's a sense of sufficiency. And it may happen that the breath stops. Don't be afraid of it stopping. If you need to breathe, you'll breathe. You're not suppressing it. If you try to suppress it, try to make it stop, there will be a problem. But here you're not trying to make it stop. You're just allowing everything in the body to connect. And the fact that everything is connected and wide open means that whatever energy needs you have are being met simply by having everything connected. And there's no felt need to breathe. That's why you have to remind yourself here again, talking to yourself, the perception you have will help you settle in there and feel at home rather than being threatened. So the process of getting the mind into concentration is one of deeper and deeper stillness, deeper and deeper calm. Sometimes it will happen simply on its own. The mind is ready to rest, and it rests. But you want to make sure that in resting you stay alert and awake. So you have to use some discernment in getting the dis state of serenity and the state of calm just right. Giving yourself more energy if you're coming to the meditation feeling sluggish or tired. Or if you're feeling frenetic, over, over energetic, wired. Start in with a serenity right there, using the different types of fabrication. Breath. Where the mind talks to itself, your perceptions, your feelings, to calm things down. And arriving at calm here, you're getting some important lessons in discernment. It's in this way that all the faculties, all the factors for awakening come together. Each one provides a, an important part of the, the mix that gets the path just right. So in calming the mind down, don't be afraid to use your discernment. Don't be afraid to analyze things. In fact, your ability to analyze things means that you'll be able to deal with times when the mind has trouble settling down. Because you've learned how to figure out what are the blocks, what are the obstacles, and how to get around them. And John Fuhrer noticed that there were two types of people, those who found that getting the mind quiet was really easy, and those who didn't. And he, told, he said that people didn't think enough and the people thought too much. The problem with the people who don't think enough, even though they find that it's easy to get the mind still, is that when they do run into problems, they don't know what to do. The problem with the people who think too much is that they get discouraged. They wonder if I'm, am my mind ever going to settle down. But if they stick with it and use these different types of fabrication, understand how the mind is shaped by them, how the body or a sense of the body is shaped by them, then the meditation becomes a real skill. You find that you can meditate in more and more difficult environments and deal with problems in the body, problems in the mind as they come up. Because you've got the key to figuring them out. 